This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you, Chris, for another interesting topic, although I must say, after reviewing this, I actually found this quite fascinating uh, and uh, may be an answer to some of the uh, uh, access problems. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. Uh, as just sort of a background, again, as we saw this morning, uh, Dr. Locke and others showed uh, how many patients are on dialysis how it impacts uh, both uh, their lives and, and the cost of uh, uh, keeping these accesses uh, functioning. And as we keep reiterating, uh, obtaining functional access is a real problem, uh, in both in terms of uh, uh, time spent as well as money. Uh, again, as part of the background, we know that uh, the six-month primary patency of an AV fistula or graft uh, after balloon angioplasty, which is the, uh, the, the next uh, line of therapy, is about 23%. We know the drug-coated balloons has been shown to have success in the SFA and popliteal region, so the question is, could this technology translate to success in AV access? Uh, again, if we think about treating uh, failing AV fistulas, balloon angioplasty is our uh, main line of defense. Uh, but we know that uh, angioplasty denudes the endothelial cells, tears the intima and the media. Uh, some have advocated using cutting balloons uh, to help this, uh, but there is still elastic recoil despite everything we do. Uh, trials are underway now to use a pancreatic elastase on the fistula uh, to prevent uh, some stenosis and recoil. Barometal stents have been tried. Uh, uh, Dr. Dolmich had uh, shown that Viabonds Stent grafts uh, can offer some improved patency in AV grafts, uh, but all of these things are, are relatively costly, uh, particularly costly when they recur frequently within a three to six month period. Uh, there is a variety of failure modes to AV fistulas. Uh, there can be pre-existing disease in the vein, uh, swing segment injury, uh, decreased vasorelaxing factors like nitric oxide uh, in relation to the fistula, uh, high shear stress. All of these things uh, result in uh, cell proliferation. And so if you think about it, this is what paclitaxel attacks. And so is, this a, 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 is there a role for drug-coated balloon the therapy to stop the cell proliferation? Uh, we know that drug coated balloons is a current treatment produces uh, some, th that the current treatment produces more injury than healing uh, in AV fistulas and again will result in increased drug pro uh, cellular proliferation. Uh, so the thought is what about combining a high pressure balloon uh, with anti proliferative uh, paclitaxel and will this give mechanical dilatation but also prevent uh, recurrent stenosis? Again, just simply, simply uh, on this busy slide uh, that the, uh, uh, the drug attacks uh, or prevents proliferation in the microtubules. Uh, these are the two uh, balloons we now have available, uh, both uh, using paclitaxel. The, uh, the balloons and the excipient are a bit different in the two types. And again, what is the effect of paclitaxel on veins? Well, it's a little bit unclear. And we don't really know what it does and if it can be deposited on the veins. Uh, we see pretty, uh, that it, uh, pretty quickly uh, in animal model that the drug is, is gone. But if we're just targeting the proliferating cells, this still should be an appropriate therapy. So that if you review the literature, there have only been a few studies so far, uh, a few reports. Uh, there has been a couple of randomized trials, the, these two here. One was a prospective randomized single center trial with drug-coated balloon 
uh, versus PTA alone for the treatment of failed AV fistulas or grafts. And a second with 26 patients, uh, same thing uh, for failed AV fistulas. Uh, interestingly, they had a couple of cases where they were able to have two stenoses, sort of similar to the case we just saw. Uh, sometimes they, di they were dilated with one type of balloon in one and one in the other, and uh, demonstrating that the, uh, the drug-coated balloon actually had a relatively long-lasting effect where there was a significant recurrence in the uh, lesion dilated with the uh, plain balloon, plain old balloon. And so all of the studies do seem to show some uh, definite advantage to using drug-coated balloons. Interestingly, uh, they describe in, in some series that what they call technical failures in the drug-coated balloon uh, arm. And a technical failure would be that you do not get uh, full dilatation from the, uh, the drug-coated balloon. Now, the, there's two reasons for that. One is that the, the largest diameter balloon that we have available is seven millimeters, and sometimes you need a bigger balloon than that. And the other is that these are not high-pressure balloons. Uh, so that it, you can see in, mo in most of the studies in the, in the uh, balloon angioplasty or high-pressure balloon arm, there's almost always 100% technical success, whereas in the uh, drug-coated balloon uh, arm, the technical success varies. But interestingly, if you look at the results, uh, there's significant uh, primary uh, target lesion patency uh, in the, in the drug-coated balloon compared to balloon angioplasty. And this is, is pretty much borne out in almost every study. Uh, in this study, we see significant improvement in primary uh, in, in patency of the target lesion in the paclitaxel versus plain balloon. Drug-coated balloon improved target lesion in dialysis circuit primary patency. It decreased pre, uh, uh, repeat procedures. Uh, but again, they described a high rate of drug, what they call drug-coated balloon failure, uh, meaning that they often had to combine this with a high-pressure balloon uh, rather than just using the drug-coated balloon standalone. And again, here's some, some data now out to 12 months where, again, in, in all parameters looked at, uh, drug-coated balloons uh, were superior to the plain balloon. Uh, single center experience with drug coated balloon, again showing uh, significant improvement in, in patency. Uh, in this study, the, at 12 months, they still had a target lesion patency of 90%, which is almost unheard of in, in other studies. Uh, this is a review that's going to come out, which looked at all, there, there's been six published studies with 254 interventions. Two are randomized, four are cohort studies. Uh, but they do describe wasting of the drug coated balloon in, in two of the studies of up to 55% of the patients. But again, at six months in, in all of the studies, the uh, target lesion primary patency in the drug-coated balloons were 70 to 97%, whereas it was zero to 26% uh, in just plain angioplasty. Looking ahead, uh, hopefully that there will be some uh, uh, more uh, investigator-driven trials. Uh, again, data is somewhat limited and uh, often combining AV fistulas and grafts, which makes it a little bit uh, uh, less clean. Uh, we need to improve potentially existing device configurations, either making them on more high pressure balloons or larger balloons. There has been the suggestion that uh, you can use uh, two balloons together to create a larger balloon, uh, but again, that does affect the cost of the, of the product. This is a case uh, that Chris did recently at the VA uh, where he uh, dilated the, uh, the cephalic arch lesion with a, a drug-coated balloon. Uh, he, this was done six months ago, and uh, this is still functioning well. Thank you.